Welcome to the regular select board meeting on Thursday, December 15th. This is the calm before the storm, um, the snowstorm tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, first thing is to set adjust agenda. We have plenty of stuff on here. Does anybody want to take something off? <laughs> nope. Um, we can take off the, the police department report and the road foreman report, and we can just make it. And yeah. one you're gonna just update whatever we need to know. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Take those off. Uh do we are we also expecting an electric department report? Okay. Yes, Nat is supposed to come. I okay. have to talk to him. Okay. Uh all right. Anything else? All in favor of um adjusting. I move it, yeah. Or yeah, all in that. You move. I make a motion to adjust the agenda, yeah. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 There we go. Aye. There we go. That's everybody. Motion carries. Next communication from the audience. I think everybody's in the audience that I, is here for a specific purpose. Looking around. Correct. Probably. Yeah. Yay! Wastewater. Waste. Whoops. <laughs> We may we may have a couple of uh, yeah. down Casey. Right. We may have a couple of downtown commission or downtown partnership people join by Zoom. So just keep an eye What's out. So you're here for wastewater? I, I was actually because uh, you you threw me off because I I'm tracking what you're wasting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next is select board to approve minutes from last time, which was December the first. Mm -hmm. Looked good to me. Mm -hmm. Approved minutes. Second. Any uh, Second. discussion? Oh, any discussion or changes or anything? All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All right, that's everyone. So um, minutes are approved. Next town manager's report given by David Upson Jr. over there. Okay, um, so I'm just starting communications with the installer Brevin Systems to discuss the installation uh, work for the network hardware that we. Oh, oh yeah, but that's going to be an ongoing project. I'm trying. I'm going to try to get it done before February when that's when we have our Lakey Center audit. That's when they're hopefully going to come in and do that. And does that look like a realistic time frame for um, there? I think so. Good. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. It's all inside work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We don't have to thaw anything out. Right. Um, Friends of the Judavine request a letter of support for their CRRP grant application. Um, hope, hopefully we can do that. That's their nonprofit wing of the... Wasn't that due today? I don't think so. Oh, that's it's different. Oh, there are different deadlines for yeah. different things. Okay. Yeah, but maybe. I mean, I just Let's was asked. It's an unfortunate acronym that if you sound it out, sounds like community <laughs> revitalization, recovery and revitalization, revitalization program. We were gonna apply for the grant. division of libraries. So what's this for? No. What's the grant for? What's the grant for? It's for um, the for the addition funds for the addition. It's it's not under it, the we're not, we are not applying for the grant. The it's friends the are applying for it. Yeah. But they're asking for a letter of support, which awesome. our policy is that we get to see the narrative before we get right. a letter of support because we've gotten into situations where there's mysteries about what the yes. money gets used for. Could we not that I suspect that they would use it for anything different? Right. But, so could we say that something like um we'd like I think in this case, where this is a um, so closely affiliated with the town, even though it's the friends, um, maybe would it be okay if we said something like, um, I think it's time the, sensitive. The town manager could write the letter so long as maybe he reviews the narrative before he sends it, something yeah, like that. Yeah, we could do that. Mm -hmm. We could. Who are the friends? I don't know. We, could, we don't have to. <laughs> Who are the friends? Now? Yeah, I don't know who the friends are. I mean, I know who the library commissioners are, but the friends well, the are the different. Trustee it's a nonprofit. One of the trustees are writing the grant. Oh, one of the trustees of the library is writing the grant. 
Okay. But we've had, I think what Sherry's concerned about is we've had in the past some entities apply for grant funding. We've given letters of support without seeing what the Yeah, no, I understand. Have. Yeah, for sure. That is definitely it. But if I so if you look at it, it decide. seems okay. If it in no way involves spending any more tax dollars. And um and, hardly, and hardly hardly. municipal tax dollars, what you're saying. Okay. And but it, well, that's, I mean, I, I don't know where the library project is even at at this point. I mean, Jody will be giving you an update tonight. Oh, tonight uh, they just hired a construction manager, so we'll get the update. Wise, so they, they've got we can ask I mean, Jody tonight. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I okay. Mean, I, I, don't I think we can we can wait to have that conversation. Oh, right? we can wait. This is just about the letters. Yeah, so we can focus on that and yeah. see it. And I'm Wait, curious to know whether our community development coordinator knows about the grant that they've applied for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Got it. So, um, so we'll talk about that again when when Jody's here for okay. the library. Okay. Yeah. Start the back. Yeah. Got we it. have a fire department ladder pumper truck. Yeah. That is in the hospital. Oh no. Um. And the quote for the repair is 40 grand. Wow. But we're talking about stuff that if we don't, we can still pay it on it. Is that? Is it paid for that one paid for? This it's a big ladder. This is that we were trying to figure that out today and then we got sidetracked with some yeah. thoughts. Um, well, this is the ladder, yeah. the ladder pumper. Well, it's the big it was one. very expensive. We had to have and if yeah. it doesn't work, then and that's not an option. Because the it's the ladder and the pumper. The so. transfer case in what runs the drive, the drive shaft, yeah. and then what pumps mm -hmm. the, the water all right. the, on yeah. the top of the ladder. Yeah. The selector. To, that's that's you, all that's broken. Yeah. Shop. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that that's is so it's a forty thousand dollar repair, but it's probably a several hundred thousand dollar truck, yes. right? It's not like you can just yes. say yes. forget it, let's go buy a new, new one. No. no, it's not scheduled to be replaced until two thousand thirty. Right. Um, so there's a couple different options. There's um, so one of the options is to do. I I haven't gotten a quote on uh, the the option of removing the ability to run the pump and just run the, dr the drive shaft. So just be able to use the, the truck as a ladder. Do we have a backup pump? Yeah. Is there something we, that could be used as we a have a We have a pumper, yeah. yeah. I think we have two, one older one and one mini pumper. Right. Um, I mean, that's not a primary, it's not an engine, it's a ladder. Yeah. The, the it's Well, it's a do everything. Right, right, but I mean, and the part of that was because of a shrinking volunteer force, I think, was why they wanted to have a truck that it they could take a one shot deal. They could operate with fewer people. Yeah. They could pack two. Which Sounds they about. still need. Which right. they still need. Yeah. So currently, our, if we're in the need of a ladder, we have a mutual aid from Morseville, which they are aware of what's going on. Okay. Which, yeah. And which was that way for years, a couple yeah. decades, it was that way. But yeah. More so, it's a long ways away on a cold winter night. Main Street's burning. Mm -hmm. We've had that issue. Yes, we have. So, so you're going to. That's very more so. It's a good to get here. Right, right. So you're going to look into that a little further. But what are our funding off? Do we have a capital fund for. We have a, a replacement of this truck in 2030. Right, but we do have a capital fund that's growing. We yeah. have for the fund. fire? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're here. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Oh, perfect. You can come sit right next to me if you want. What? <laughs> um, so as of 6 30, right. 22, I have 140,000 right in it. Fire equipment, 140, and we set aside 75 in the current year. So there's 215 right now um, with that one scheduled to be replaced in 2030. So is this the kind of thing that you can proceed with repairs now and sort out where that money actually comes from later? Or do you want to? 
Well, it would, we'd have to, something like that would need to come out of this capital fire equipment. All right. All right. We'd, we'd have to figure out a way to put it back in. So the well, that's my concern, and with with well, kind of with necessarily because the projection. I mean, assuming our price is correct, the projection shows that after that purchase, there's still be hundred twenty-five thousand in there. Oh, if you look at the schedule. So, so there's hundred thousand. So right okay. there, it shows there would be a balance even after that purchase. So if there were forty thousand less, you so could still buy the new truck. There's a question. But this there. this truck is not a four hundred. This wouldn't be a, the four hundred thousand. We'd need more. Yeah. Tom says about seventy five thousand, seven hundred fifty thousand. I'm talking. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so a very. Well, we need that truck. Right? Yeah. We need that truck. So like, we yeah. need to get it fixed. I think first of all, then. And then figure out how to. So, how to it, I mean, we're we're not going to be fully funded in thirty anyway. So. Yeah, but right. another thing that I mean, we do have a fairly. I mean. I don't want to lean everything on this, but we do have a fairly robust fund balance. So if we overspent the fire department line by forty thousand dollars this year, at the end, of the the way that happens is it just be right. our fund balance at the end. Yeah, I don't know, I and mean, then that keeps all the money in the capital, which still isn't enough. Right? Which still if we take it out of the capital. That's it's hard to make it back up. That back up. So I think we what we're saying is we want it fixed. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather see the money come out of the fund balance than out of the capital fund. I would do that. Do you have a motion or can we just move ahead with it? Take it out first, right off the get go. Can we do that? I didn't. We're going to take pay for it out of the fund balance money instead of. So to overspend the fire department. Oh, yeah, just yeah. overspend yeah. fire department yeah. by 40 grand. I don't, okay. I don't know, unless there's- It's a uh, uh, eight to 14 week repair, so. Whoa. Yeah. Parts. Parts. Oh, just waiting for parts. Yeah. Somebody's not gonna be under the truck for eight weeks working. <laughs> no, parts, waiting. Uh, well, it's 26,000 in parts and 13,000 in labor and shipping. 13,000 in labor? No. Yeah. I heard a bearing for my things. It's big. The whole gear box is shot. It, it's a transfer. Yeah. It's pump yeah. to go from pump to transmission or yeah. back. Yeah. It's not just a regular <laughs> transfer case. So you're talking more money. Yeah. Um, the labor, as soon as you say emergency vehicle, you're you're looking at more too. Yeah. Um, the mechanics up there, they are from Burlington Public Works. They work on all their stuff up there and they work part time for DeRocher, hmm. which is where Mia Nunes, he's a representative of E1. Hmm. So hmm. it's it's a pretty reputable. It's a legit place, quote. Yes. Get it done. All right. Um, do we, we, need a I, we need a motion? Oh, we do. Say, I make a motion that we repair <laughs> no. the. And we, I mean, we just found out about this. So to put it on the agenda as an item. I brought it up in my manager report. So. so I make a motion that we repair the engine ladder truck with funded through. Oh, just overspending. Overspending the, the fire line budget, line, whatever. Sweeten that up for me a little, Casey, would you? <laughs> repair uh, one second. Overspending the fire department equipment repair line. Yes. Yeah, right. I'll second. At least get a complete sentence in there. So. Dipping into that, yeah, we'll do that. Right that, that truck should last the remainder of its term until twenty thirty. Can we yes. push? Can we push the term out a little bit? Because we might. I don't know because that will be our next truck in line to meet. Yeah. State standards. Right. Now that one's one that's going to be up. Not, not so hang on. Standard. We have a motion. Do we have yeah. a second? Yes, Chair. Chair seconded. And any more discussion about funding this large repair? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yep, here it comes. Oh, I said aye. What was that? Said aye. She said aye. Okay, so that's everyone. So motion carries. Thank you. We'll just assume all her votes are ayes. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Kaylee. Um, okay, these two last two ones shouldn't take long. 
So um, a message from my community development coordinator uh, to future grant application opportunities, looking for an informal nod, uh, better connections program. This would be used for a designated village center master plan for East Hardwick. NVDA offered assistance in applying for this. The max request is 75,000, which is really uh, $67,500 with a 10% match. And the second one is a downtown transportation grant for additional funding for the pedestrian bridge. And the max request is 200,000. Is the match for the uh, designated village center grant, is that in kind or can, does that have to be cash? It's cash match. It's cash. Yeah. So we're talking about seventy five hundred dollars. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to put when in the budget I had East Hardwick Village, and right. this is like a you know instead of sidewalks only we do a East Hardwick Village. Improvement. Improvements or because they are a designated village center, mm -hmm. um, and this would be the match for something something along these lines. So, what is a designated village center master plan? It's basically the first step in it's it's like a, a mini town plan, but it's the first step in the line of being able to get funding for future projects. So, so it's kind of a requirement. Some of those projects and other. Hmm? We hear this a lot. Opie, yeah. Opie really quick question. Can, can we use um, as a match? So this would include, I would imagine this would include the East Hardwick Bridge, which is going to be an expensive project. Can we include some of the capital as the match for that, since we have some built up, including the line that you were just talking about? I, I mean, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd, I guess we'd have to have a further discussion about that. Um, we are also looking for uh, grant opportunities for the replacement of that, or for the repair and refurbishment of that bridge. Um, so we're just kind of starting to get a plan together for to utilize the village center designation to be able to get some of these projects going. Um, I'd like Tracy's got her hand up, so unmute. There you go. Sorry. Um, I was just going to say that the max amount we, we don't actually know that we would go for the maximum amount um, right. we don't really know uh i'm going to be meeting with annie um from uh, nbda next week to talk about what it might cost to get a master plan in east hardwick has had a lot of different pieces already done of a plan and so the concept is that that would bring these things together the locomotion plan the trailhead plan for ldrt the sidewalk audit a lot of the work that's already happening at the Grange and the River House, that kind of thing, and bring businesses into the conversation to create a little plan. One of the other, um, another impetus for doing this is that the designated village centers that have gone through the Better Connections grant program then become eligible for downtown transportation fund money. Um, downtown transportation funds can only be used in designated downtowns. Woohoo, we're going to be one soon, I think, but also uh, in designated village centers that have gone through the Better Connections grant program. So that's another um, motivation we're doing. Hey, go ahead. So, with that, line us up. I, I'm just trying to figure out how this helps in some direct way. So, so you're saying that the so the East Hardwick Village is a designated village, village, village center. center. Yeah. And if we did this designated village center master plan, then that designated village center could get downtown Other. transportation funds. Those could potentially help with sidewalks and bridges. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. I got it. So this helps us access more grant funding. Yes. I think we should do it. Exactly. Uh, um, the plan just for the for the yeah the planning commission is also if the select board supports it the planning commission has also said that they will they definitely support this project so but first before anything so Tracy you're going to have a conversation with um and someone at NBDA about how much money we'd actually be asking for it would likely be less than the maximum you think 
I'm guessing we're meeting on Wednesday, so I'll know more after that. Yeah. All right. So basically, when I bring something like this up in the manager's report, yeah, I don't want to get into the same position we got in a couple like two months ago, where, where you guys said no when we showed up with a resolution, where she'd already spent a lot of time, where she something. already spent a lot of yeah. time, yeah. and her time is limited, so I want to maximize that. Yeah. It's a good plan. I think it's a good. I think this is when I need to say no. <laughs> yeah. If you want to say no, you can say no. I'm saying no. You're okay. saying no. I don't know. I just get discouraged. All we do is plan. All we do is pay to plan, pay to plan, pay to plan. Yeah, there's a lot of things. We should execute plan. once in a while. Yeah. Execute, you mean start projects. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just clarify. Yeah. I mean, I've been hearing this. We need so to many, down we center. We so need many of these. We need this down there. This. We need it's, this it's like, we need this, but it's I like haven't a flow, seen come out of it. It's like a flow chart. chart. It's like a flow chart. New banners. Other things possible. That's the only reason why I we have banners it. is because I wrote a grant for our well, community I, foundation I that does ask us to have I all that. See it. I'm not seeing the other end of it. Well, it's when to see it's a slow end. process. So we got some new sidewalks out here. We can we, like we can we can go around and like downtown. I know, I know. There's there's improve it's hard to see improvement it's not i can meet you around town and show you a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be improved without any plan no i know that it, but what anyway, i'm saying is just, that that down the downtown yeah. project here that would, took years of planning before they executed that i know about planners yeah planners, our sewer project planners, is planners, going planners, planners, planners. yeah we're doing that, that well, we just did, yeah, we did. Here. There's an engineer. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Danny, we, okay. we are not going to be able to afford to, to fix that bridge without some money from the state. So, whatever, if this helps with that, let's do it. Yeah. Oh, there's other money too, I think, for the bridge, probably. But we're working on right. um, a structures grant through V Trans. Yeah, which is great. But yeah. I, I'm thinking things like the sidewalks yeah. that are going to be expensive, but not bridge expensive. Yeah. Might be playing. Maybe playing. I mean, we also have, like, for example, um, I. I had I had to call Norman Gravel today to find out if he was doing the sidewalks this year. Um, he donates a lot of his time to do that. Yes. And like, for example, if he couldn't do that, there's like, we need to have a plan in place for the village of East Hardwick. And what, I don't mean a written plan, just a plan to operate that end of town. Because we're not going to send our road crew up there to do the sidewalks. So it's like just that little piece, you know, we want to have a. What yeah, about the sidewalk to Magno? We could do that too. We, we should hire a it. consultant to plan it. Come on, let's go. All right. Let's do it. Tracy has her hand up. Yeah. Can she? All right. Here. No microphone. Go ahead, Tracy. Okay, just, just a couple of things. Danny, I don't know if this helps at all, but um, the the. Better Connections program is very adamant that they are not interested in producing plans that are going to sit on a shelf. And although it's called a master plan, they really call it like an action plan. They want to see concrete steps that you are going to tackle one at a time. And they 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 want it to to move toward actual projects. So that I like that attitude. I, I will also say that just because we're playing doesn't mean simultaneously we can't also be doing some things that we've already decided our priorities. But just like be getting getting East Hardwick designated as a designated village center, which took some time, then allowed us to be eligible for this Better Connections grant. If we do this, then that allows us that allows East Hardwick to in future be eligible for the downtown transportation fund, which could be helpful in a lot of things that, that are going to be needed in East Harbor. So it's just a sort of building. It's a step in a process that, yes, it is di dictated by the state, but it also gives us the potential for getting money from the state, which we couldn't otherwise get. So um, I, I don't think we have to stop taking action because we're planning, I, I think we can, you know, continue to move forward on some of the things we know need to be done. Um, so anyway, that's yeah. fine. Thank you.
So I think what I'm hearing is that you're going to get you're going to get four nods and one shake of the head, right? Okay. I think so. Okay, that's what we're thinking at this point. Okay. But if she comes back and she says, actually, it's a lot smaller, and Danny, this is what we're going to do, you might change your mind. Yeah. Well, it's not It's not about this. It's the whole... No, it's the whole the way that all this stuff works. That's, that's, that that, that's, that's the nature of the, of the beast. It's it the nature of the beast. I don't it's frustrating. I, know I don't agree with a lot of things. It doesn't need to work. Though. Right. I know I have bunch of rows every day without village and downtown designation. So right. let's just move on. Yeah, let's okay, see. we're moving on. What about the next one, which is the, okay, the downtown transportation grant for additional funding for the pedestrian bridge? That's a way to do that. So okay. the trouble, okay, so. So the 620,000 we have is not going to be enough. Right. Nope. <laughs> it's not going to be enough. Right. Well, I think it's going to be close, but it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. But if we had this 200, yeah, then we'd be, be a lot closer be to a lot better. Closer. We and then, um, and the so, two hundred is available to us as a designated downtown. Just saying, because it's through because it's part of those the funds the that are available only to designated downtown or designated village centers who have uh, created a master plan. Yeah, that too. Yep. You don't have that. You nailed it. It would have been a lot simpler to do that than. <laughs> Okay. Well, start. So Just yeah. Say, well, if they're back, they're back. So my favorite municipal planning consultant has offered to maybe help us with this. Um, so this wouldn't be something Tracy would do, but she would work with um, Heather Carrington to do. Okay. If you guys, the Good. informal nod. This yeah. is just the informal nod. So okay. I'd like I'd like to see that because having I, I think that our bridge is gonna cost we're gonna need that two hundred thousand. That's right. Yes. Yes. This is not will. getting money to plan. It's this is getting money to build. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Next time I'm gonna you know John Jewett told me he's like keep your manager's report short. <laughs> Don't tell him anything. But yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it. So okay. we're nodding at the second one too. Okay. Think, perfect. Right? Are we? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Good. Two, two, All right, nine. and then the last one is the bridge meeting with SE Group to discuss custom features for the bridge, i.e. lighting, width, decking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. SE Group will provide us with a spreadsheet to finalize those decisions, which will move us closer to being able to order a new bridge. Lights. So that project is moving forward. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, so that'll be at our next meeting we'll have um hopefully we'll be presenting they're going to provide i think i got it at the end of the day today in my email yeah um i'll distribute it and we'll move forward we have to make decisions yeah well because so that we can i gotta be fun i'm gonna give the teaser which is that we're we're leaning we're definitely leaning toward the bridge that people option one which was the one most people selected yep and it's the simplest one i still have found it <laughs> And oh, that's a website. And it's we took it down. And, and we're it come off the website if it's still on there. Yeah, I don't think it is. So we'll have some uh, images, but I think that um two important points that the budget is looking higher than it's looking closer to eight or nine hundred thousand or something like that. Yeah. And that because we have to replace both abutments. And right. then, yeah. Yep. And then I think that is a yeah. very I think we could. It, that's that's a high. Yeah. We hope that's a very conservative. As program. Adam would say, it's a high level estimate. And then, but the other thing I want to say is that we're that's pushing ours. I think we all we all have our eyes on getting that done next year, yeah. and that's going to take a little bit of pushing some folks. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're and having. To. Maybe another public meeting in. Yeah, and, and we're January. Gonna, or we could discuss it at town. Be a bully. Be pushing people. Maybe well. Now. Oh, too late. Hmm? If we don't All right. Sure. Sorry. Anything else? I'm done. You were going to say that the road crew is getting ready for a storm tomorrow. Yep. And you're going to say the police department is. They're in the process policing. of an investigation right now. Oh, they are. And it's knee, going well. Knee deep in the this. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I got. Great. I even got a movie. I won't play that. All right. Good. Next up is. Uh, hey, we're right back on schedule. Six. <laughs> Next up is the Tardif Electric Department report. We have Nat Smith, who has joined us to kindly bring us up to date on the electric department. Yeah, a couple of items. So our most recent financials show that we're 1.2% under budget on revenues, 5.5% over budget on expenses for the year. 
given by purchase power costs in the first quarter of this year, which were about 13% over but obviously global that global natural gas market. The problem with New England regional power sources are highly dependent upon natural gas. It's also the case that supply chain problems are well known by everybody. For example, transformers historically have an eight to 12 week lead time for delivery. Presently, they're quoting 44 weeks. Prices have tripled in the last two years. So it's been 13 years since our last rate increase. As you know, we're filing for a new one. That rate increase we think will be uh, request will be finalized the next few days. We expect an increase of upwards of 14%. Right now, residents pay six cents a kilowatt hour for the first hundred, and then after that, almost 18 cents per kilowatt hour. So that will go up from 17.9 to about 20, 20 and a half. Unfortunately, we think it's appropriate and necessary. Our walk at hydro has generated 2.6 megawatt hours this year so far. And the H11 solar field about 2.2 megawatt hours. The two of them represent the two that we own, about 16% of our total customer need. So follow up from November meeting with you all. The board of commissioners is in the middle of evaluating an, an investment in well over one million dollars by a million and a half <laughs> into a automated metering infrastructure project, which I think is terrible. The business model for the project does not have a very interesting payback period on this investment. They said seven years, I think it's now 10 or even more. But there's regulatory pressure from the state to eventually make it required that we have automated meters, not the meters that a guy comes down and reads. They won't help any of us. But, and there's grant money available now to cover about half the expense. So do we take that? Or do we take our say no and take it? Take our chances down the road. Top decision. We're also evaluating a stored energy project to be built next to the H11 solar on Billings Road. That would be a four plus megawatt battery utilized to reduce our peak demands, as well as potentially generate revenues in the future from new technologies. Any questions? I'd be happy to try to answer. Yeah. Yeah. How how big would that battery be? Just well, said. What micro here is four megawatts. No, but inside physically. physically. Oh, I saw a picture of it. It doesn't look that big. It's a it, I think they're the on the order of shipping containers. Yeah. Okay. Because I just I looked the last water. a shipping container. Yeah, I, I would have said less, but yeah. Okay. I just yeah, the I last like meeting we, the last meeting we had, um okay. Vince brought that up and I Googled batteries yeah. and uh like big ba battery banks and i think um there was one like the size of a uh like a a big warehouse it was the largest battery wow and i was let's go big we're gonna put a battery in let's put a big battery in <laughs> four megawatts not a lot big this is just peak shaving but we run into trouble in the winter rather than have to buy on the market we could use the stuff that's sort of our battery right so, yeah I think it's yeah, a great idea. I read a little. So it's a pretty sophisticated system, right? Too, because don't, aren't you trying to anticipate when the peaks are going to be? Right? They, I think. They know. They but the smart metering would help. Would tell oh, apparently. Know when the peaks are coming. It's if they know what the weather's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shaving. I don't yeah. believe a word, but <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe in smart meters either. So no. I'm right. glad you're where you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. automated, right? There's no advantage of an automated meter. Uh, you can have different rate structures for different times of day. Yeah, for our little old and you can company, and you can uh, probably predict the peaks a little better. Yeah. You can yeah. Predict yeah. Yeah. And you can offer electricity at two o'clock in the morning if you want to hook up your maple syrup then. But or charge your electric car. Or charge your well, that's a whole another problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. You can talk about this. All right. So um uh, I understand yeah, I understand why you're 
your over budget on your expenses, um, 1.2 percent under on revenues. Is that? I mean, that's 1.2 percent is pretty close to yeah, where. You, right? I, I don't think that's a There's other not issues that. Well, are behind just, that. why there being more. Just, uh, oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. One percent is fine. Okay. Very, very mild fall, so I'm sure that I know everybody's like to down. Yeah. One percent is much. All right. Fourteen percent is, and the B may not manage fourteen percent, so it may be less than that. But yeah, they call it us. All right. Any other questions for Nat while he's here? Thank you. Oh, thanks for coming. All right, next up, item one, select board to discuss time and location of the 2023 town meeting. Sherry Cornish. Let's do it on Tuesday. Tanya's here. Do we the first Tuesday? Sure, sure. All right, first Tuesday in March, we're yeah. going to do it. That's the townhouse. At the townhouse. At the townhouse. Is Danny someone, said it first. Has someone I'm going to be in Dallas. What? No, I'm not going to sit in front of the town and tell them the taxi's going up 12, 14 to turn. That's you guys. Yes. You're dumb. <laughs> I ain't even clearly not in it for the long run. No, I didn't do it. You Actually, I won't be here either. either. <laughs> I'm just I'm not not you guys. So, so did somebody check with the town clerk? Yes, she's on. She. Tanya, do you want to unmute? Where is she? So, he's there. Hi, Tanya. Hi. So, for if you do it at townhouse, um, we can't do voting there because your stage isn't ADA compliance yet, is it? No, not yet. And that's where we'd have to do the voting. So we'd have to do two separate locations if you choose to do your meeting there. So how did it used to work? I guess we used to have town meeting. Voted in front. Yeah. And so we could no we could look at changing the way that the uh, seating is so the voting so we can turn it around or something. I think we can probably figure out how people could be in. The, I mean, at the school, it's all in the same room. It's just bigger. bigger. But... Yep. The lighting is a little tricky in the the townhouse you know, for people that can't see that well. We it's had we had lights. I know, I know. It's just that was one of the complaints. Is the school still in office? I'm just the in, school's already given us approval if we want to do it there. The elementary school. They yeah. they said what? They they okay she said. Oh well, then do it one more year there. I don't care. I'm not going to fight for it. I give up. So we'll do it at the townhouse. The next year, we'll. So what are we going to reason? Yeah, I... it doesn't. It needs to be when the time the town report goes out. It needs to say where people are going to meet. Yes, and I. I'm just going to be quiet. You're going to be away. No, I want to be here. Oh, she's like that. You want to change? I think that we could figure out how to, um, like we used to have it I... townhouse or. I think it would be really cool. We haven't had an in-person town meeting since COVID. And um, at least in the three years I've been on the board, this has been punted every time Sherry's brought it up, if not before then. I think if we can address the ADA issue, something like lighting is pretty easy to figure out and that we should do it. Let's, let's go with the townhouse. Can we have people in the balcony? No. no. Because we used to have a lot of people in the balcony during town meeting. We used to have a lot of people at town meeting. Yeah, so you know what? One thing we have had the last couple of town meetings I've been to at the gymnasium was a lot of kids. Yeah. A lot more kids than I remember. We traditionally used to have a town meeting. Traditionally, a town meeting in the old days, there weren't any kids there. There's also a kitchen there. I'm just saying. That There's also a kitchen at the high school or the yeah, elementary school. So I don't know. That's just kind of the... Um, that was just a statement. Is all I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, I, I will go where everybody else wants to go. But well, so I just. Say anything. No. Norma, can you state your name, please? I'm not a and I'm just here to serve me. But um, I really think that the elementary school is a lot more comfortable than the town. I've been to both. It's just easier to just go be able to vote, listen to what's going on. There's more room. Just saying. Yep. It's your decision, but that's my opinion. Thank you. I mean, from a space standpoint and the accessibility of where you can park, how close you can park. 
Like you can pack up back. Right, in the school, school. club. Or, yeah. I used to like when we had at the townhouse, I felt like I could hear better mm -hmm. and that um, it was a, it, it felt better. more like a group discussion because I don't know why, I guess I, I could hear and better. And the parking will be all clear yeah, because it's a trailhead. Yeah. And I, um, I'm not saying no, I was just, just saying we're just talking the truth. Yeah. I I I, I like to feel at the townhouse. You know, so the, the elementary school feels the issue we have is ADA. So if we, if we can't fix that between now and then, it's definitely well the townhouse, the first floor is ADA. It's just that we used to before we haven't done the thing with the stage yet. So we can't have voting on the stage, which is the ultimate plan to get back to. Okay. That. Could you not but, have a voting booth on the floor for voting? ADA? Yeah, I think it's downstairs. Yeah. Got a lot of work to do that day. You'll have it back behind the partition or something so that, that you know, it meets ADA compliance. So you've got an ADA voting booth and then you've got the rest of them up on the stage. Oh, I don't know. Can you do that? I'm about to go up and down the stairs. I think it's kind of hard. Yeah. But it could also just be where they were before. Down front. Yeah. So are you, are you going to have it at 10 o'clock, the same as it has been in the past? Yeah. I don't know. Is there a reason to do it? No, I'm just wondering. And then, um, Tanya, how late are the polls open? They're going to be open like 9 to 7, or will they be 10 to 7? Um, we'll do 9 to 7, and then it'll all be hand counting, so we'll have to hand count off. So. Um, <coughs> So it would probably be there till nine ish. In the but last voting, voting would be nine to seven. In the last couple of years, the school district has had their meeting right. either right before or right after town meeting. Yep. Do we know where they're planning to meet? Um I talked I he was emailing with Taylor at O SSU today and she is going to check on that to see if they're doing their meeting or if they're going to have it on their ballot again this year like they did the last two years. They're not sure yet. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm I'm mixed. I feel I like the townhouse. I like the feel. I like the the discussion there. But on the other hand, I see the practicalities of the school with the parking and the the kitchen and the you know there's more space. So. One more year at the school. And the new townhouse when we have ADA. Yeah. Because that would be more room for the meeting with the ballots. And, okay. Is there a little bit of ballot right over over? open for people again? Yeah, when we have our addition that is a fire escape. We no longer have fire escapes on the building. So that's the issue. Right. Uh, that not open until we do our thing. I remember that, and that's great. But oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Those stairs are no longer rotting the sides of the building. Yeah, yeah, which is great. Okay. So we'll another project that we need to be something designated. Yeah. Wait. So, so I say we do that, but Sherry, get it in writing because you can't trust these people. We say that every year. Mm -hmm. We'll do it next year at the We'll downhouse. do it next year. Because, yeah. Because like we keep saying that. Well, will yeah. it depend on if it's like yeah. ADA compliant? Though? It will be at that point, though. Should be. That what's, there, then. what's the seating capacity? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, 140 downstairs. Which is all we would have this year. Mm -hmm. Which is more than we used to Is it more than the attendance at town meeting? Oh, last yeah. Last couple of years. No, it's easily. Really? Yeah, last well, we haven't had town meeting. That's true. But right, the last but couple of meetings meeting before that. We weren't last heavy. couple before that were pretty dismal. But I remember one time in, in there, it was full. It was great. Yeah. And the downtown, it was just so that was then. Yeah. 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 That was then. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And everybody was close together. And it was close together. Yeah. Yeah. And then people. Yeah. When we were fighting about something. That year. There was a bunch of people standing in the back. It was great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we, there was a big argument that year. I, that was the South Tower or garbage dump or something. No, there was something going on because I um, remember it was bad. What was it? Something good. Let's keep moving. So <laughs> yeah, we got a long we got a long agenda ahead of us. All right, let's roll. So 
what's the will of the where we I guess we don't actually have to decide, but it would be good to. Let's decide. <clears throat> town of Clark. We're with the school here and then townhouse next year. Okay. I make a motion we have town meeting at the school this year. Yeah, we don't. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, need that's we don't. We, we need to approve the warning at some point, and that'll say where it is. And that's coming up later. Whatever we're going to do, we're going to. Okay, we're moving on. Next uh, item, item two: Select Board discuss and approve the memorandum of understanding with the Hardwick Downtown Partnership. Good evening, all. Uh, sorry to join you by Zoom, but I wasn't sure what was going to happen with the storm. Um, again, I'm Heather Carrington. I'm the consultant who's been putting together the downtown designation for you. And I'm happy to tell you this is the last time you will be considering things from me on this project. And the entire application should be uh, submitted, I would think, the last week of December. But I've been submitting large swaths of it to the Vermont Downtown Program Coordinator for him to review it and give me comments if he wants anything changed before I submit the final thing. So we are well on our way. Um, I've given you a memo with the two agenda items you have before you tonight. The first one being the memorandum of understanding between the Town of Hardwick and the Hardwick Downtown Partnership. And what this does is it memorializes that you have made a financial contribution to the downtown organization, and that's one of the requirements for the application. This is not a new financial um, commitment. This is money that you've already allocated. You allocated previously through the ARPA funds, $10,000 for downtown uh, recovery. And so those funds have been divided into two tranches, $5,000 for FY23, $5,000 for FY24. Um, so this just basically demonstrates that you have skin in the game with the organization and have made a financial commitment. Um, in terms of the roles and responsibilities, I received a bunch of questions, um, and I believe you have all been CC'd on my responses to those questions. Primarily, yep. it's been about whether you have been making, um, you're making more of a financial commitment and you are not making more of a financial commitment. This MOU is to cover FY23 and 24. And my recommendation is that in future, what you do is annually renew the MOU. And that gives flexibility to um, make a contribution, not make a contribution, shift staffing models, whatever it is that you need to do. But overall, what this is, is um, your guarantee of what services you will get in exchange for the funding that you have provided to the downtown partnership. Um, I do want to clarify one thing because this was raised as a question and, and wasn't clearly understood before. Um, what I'm proposing and how this is envisioned is a shared staffing model between the town and the downtown organization. So it would be a 10 hour a week executive director that we're talking about. So overall, the entire budget, I, I, at present, and it's not yet approved, um, and we'll be going through the downtown board for that because they're the ones who are fiscally responsible for the funding. Um, but it would be a 10 hour position and I think probably about a $20,000, $25,000 a year budget. Um, it's useful to know that the, down, the Vermont Downtown Coalition is taking to the legislative session this year, a proposal that $20,000 go to each designated downtown for operations. So that would take care of almost the entire budget if that is in fact passed. And it looks likely at present, but that's just a guess on my part. So I'm happy to take any questions that you have about the document before you, and I'm happy to make changes if you would prefer to see it again. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. Yep, any questions? I asked all my questions, Heather, and, and I got very satisfactory answers. Thank you. Thank you very much for asking in advance. I appreciate those. Yeah, it worked. We're... Yeah, it was helpful for me too. <laughs> uh, uh, so, backing up, where are we? We have to, uh, what we want to do is engage, what do we want to do? Approve the memorandum of understanding? Do I have to abstain? Because you're on the board. Yeah, probably. And I'm signing this memorandum as the board. Oh, look at that. President. Uh, so yes. Well, you don't have to because Vermont's very squishy about that, but it's probably a good thing good to do. It looks good, good idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we need to make a motion to approve. Yes. Uh, a motion to sign or a motion to approve? I think it says approve. 
Yeah. I'm going to approve the memorandum of understanding between the town of Harvick and the Harvick Downtown Partnership Inc. And Second. to have our town manager sign. And uh, town manager and represent the town. And your second. second. Any more discussion about the MOU? Kaylee, you're good. All in favor. Yep. Of, Thank you. All in favor of uh, approving the MOU, please say aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Abstaining. Oh, you're abstaining. Aye. And an I. So that's every uh so four eyes and an abstention. Um and next is to discuss and approve the resolution to allocate a portion of the town water wastewater reserves to the downtown revitalization. So part of the plan is to do within that downtown area to do infill and um future development. future development so outline. Are those numbers? I have them. Huh? We didn't. What we got didn't have much. I have numbers them. I worked. It, 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 it was a joint effort by our um, town clerk and myself today, mainly the town clerk. Um, but we came up with nineteen percent of the total um, reserve, current reserve, and that equates to forty six thousand three hundred seventy five gallons a day. So that's what. Would be written in those in that well, resolution, right? But it's actually calling out thirty to forty new housing units. Mm -hmm. We took that into consideration. Ten to twelve thousand. This one makes me nervous. Allocating a certain percentage of our water yeah. and wastewater for the downtown, which is pretty limited in space. Why don't you let Heather speak to that? Um, yeah. That I the projections, if if you don't mind, um, the projections are based on existing properties. Um, you know, again, they're just projections, but the number of the allocation is an up to number. So that's a maximum number. That's not that you're saying that you would commit 19, you know, 19%, as Opie was saying, of the uncommitted wastewater. It's that you would commit up to that, no more than is what you're saying there. And the designated downtown boundaries are larger than the current village center boundaries in our application. So and, and the, how did they relate to the enterprise zone boundaries? Jesus. Well, Define the enterprise zone, like the industrial park? The, the, the water and wastewater yeah. is an enterprise zone that, that it... Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Out, it's you, I would say it's less. Pay for it. It's less than twenty five percent. The designated village center proposed boundaries mm -hmm. is less than a quarter of of what the water and wastewater serves. Okay, so this number is roughly in alignment with what with the geographic territory we're talking about. It's more in line with the current uses yeah. and future planned uses um based on what's available for space okay. okay with the additional housing units mm -hmm. and property available for development okay yeah so do you want to when i was in your office earlier you had a total of the current usage for that district that... our current usage for that is with a, a little with a little bit of a fluff factor is twenty one thousand gallons a day and so what you're proposing is we lock up to about twice that. Twice that, 46,375 gallons a day. And the point of this um, resolution is because we want to demonstrate to somebody that we have capacity to make the growth that's, to, to support the growth that's projected. That's correct. It's required as part of the application to demonstrate that we are um, already prepared to provide what it is that we would need for a downtown designation. And keep in mind that I have estimated these projects, um, but I estimated really based on available parcels, based on an expectation that certain projects would go, like the Blue Donkey Project, the bank rehabilitation, um, occupation of previously vacant spaces, um, like Windshield World, for example. Um, so it's based on um, real on the ground circumstances.
And if you do decide to approve this, I would recommend that you strike the um, under uh, the resolution itself, number one, the select board hereby dedicates up to 19% of the uncommitted wastewater reserve and then strike the of X gallons and just say providing an allocation of approximately 46,375 gallons per day. And the same with number two as well. Yeah, okay. So do we want to... If we don't renew this MOU in 18 months, does this commitment go away as well? You no. could you could put in with the resolution um, that you will reevaluate the percentage. We could add a line where you will reevaluate it on an annual basis. So it wouldn't go away. This is a resolution of the select board and has nothing to do with the downtown organization per se. Um, it's about the downtown designation itself. So I would I would add a line. You might want to add language that this will be reconsidered on an annual basis, which allows you some flexibility. That feels better. Oh, sounds like lining up more work because every year we. Just, <laughs> I mean, if we really find it. Well, it's something. I, it's something that John started. It's something that the state used to keep track of, and they oh. stopped. Oh. And then John started again and didn't, and you know, he kept it going, but it's not to try to know whether we'd have capacity to, to try to predict this stuff. Approaches, approach the town to right. Right. open here. We have to know whether or not they can do what they want to do. So, so it's important to have a running. I mean, this, this, I learned a lot. That's the reason why they yeah. want. How confident are we in our um, estimate of our uh, of our uncommitted there, reserve? Because we have, don't we have businesses in the industrial park that have like percentage allocations or? Yes. We do. They're not in the downtown. And they're, but those aren't uncommitted. Those are already committed. Yeah, those are, no. those are flowed like, we're we're already capturing that. Some of it we're not because it's high strength waste, and that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, but I guess what I'm wondering is if we if you try to figure out our uncommitted amount based on our current flows, is that accurate? Because some people in the industrial park might have already an existing commitment to a certain amount of the wastewater, but they might not be outputting that. Currently. You know what I mean? Right. So it might be committed, even though it's not being used. Mm -hmm. We're going to partner to get somebody that comes in there that needs a big shot. I don't think we have any of that situation, close situation you don't right now. So. Okay. I also kind of think it's a low risk thing to do this because um, if, when I look at the, the list of proposed developments in the downtown area and think about just, if we didn't do this, right. And somebody came to us and said, we're opening a restaurant at the Blue, we're opening the Blue Donkey and Richard Brochu's old service station. Are you guys okay? Which they like, just got approved for. Right. Yeah. So we're going to probably approve that. If somebody comes in and says, oh, there's this empty lot and we want to build this duplex and it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we need a sewer hookup, we're probably going to say, do we have capacity? If so, yes, go ahead. So this is interesting. Because today has an meeting in the uh, ACCD, yeah. whatever it is. Uh, <clears throat> we're talking about, so that's basically what he says. We need to start building more in our villages. We need to start building four-story, five-story right. residential buildings in those areas. So that people can yeah, live in those that. areas. So, because that's where the infrastructure yep. is. Yep. Ahead of those versus, you know, if you don't want five-acre lots, all over the countryside, the alternative is, is, is to build back in the designated buildings and stuff. So, you know, that capacity, that's why the asking for this, obviously. Right. That didn't sound like a lot. Me. No, I don't think it is. It doesn't lot. sound like it's going to put us on the hook to have to say no to anyone else if that right. has occurred. Right. Sounds like we had a flexibility and if it was buying this out to figure out a way to change it. 
I agree. Given the fact we're really unsure what our capacity really is. Right. You know, we got an idea, but not. So I, I would. Can I make a motion to approve the resolution with the changes that Heather recommended? You can sure and, you like. and so that you want to approve the resolution striking the two um, reserve of X number of gallons in numbers one and two and uh, percentage is going to be inserted as 19%. 19%. And uh, providing an approximate uh, allocation of 46,375 gallons a day. A day. Is that for both of them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's your motion, Kaylee? Correct. I thought so. Oh. <laughs> Second. Okay. Would you like to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but would you like to add that you will re, uh, resolve to review and renew the allocation annually? No, no. sounds like work. No. Okay. <laughs> we'll review it when we're deep, deep. That's right. right. We'll review it when we have problems. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and not before. And we're not before. Be yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll fix it if it's not broken. Uh, some board, right. right. Okay. More discussion on this resolution about the water wastewater capacity. Reserve. Okay. All in favor of approving the resolution as stated, please say aye. 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 Wait, and Sherry abstain. Should I abstain from that one too? No. Yeah. No. no. I don't okay. sign it. You're saying all right. Everybody, so unanimous. I don't think Thank you, everyone. So the motion carries. And um I'm gonna write that in. And that's and thank you for uh, coming to uh, explain everything to us. Yeah, anytime. So I'll make the revisions um, and then send it uh, to staff to have you sign. Great, sounds good. All right, thank you so much. Thanks, Heather. That's this. All right, next up is item three, select board discuss and approve the resolution. Yeah, oh no, good. we just did that. Right. Item four. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, select board to approve a request to uh, variance to tie into this town's uh, collection system. This is the wastewater collection system. Correct. Uh, so here we are back at okay. water and wastewater. You passed it when you were young. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, well, I don't, how come they told me I have to hook up to water and sewer? But here it says I don't. Because you're more than 300 feet? Yeah. They made me. Okay. They did. They were just fun. No, they, it wasn't fun at all. Can you throw that on? It's not really the fun. It's not the hooking up part. It's having to pay every month back. Uh, Opie, can you uh, yeah. give us an intro on this? Uh... Uh oh, are we Zoom? Are we having Zoom issues again? No, no we're no, just no. going to throw the email up the email. That, from Patrick Larson. Oh, OK. Well, so I, I can just said it would be cheaper. Um, right. Yeah, Did you read the email? Yeah. OK. So um, I believe, do you guys want to introduce yourselves and explain your project and, or do you want me to do it? No, I mean, I can just, I'm okay. Lori Bathelder, my husband, Scott. We just purchased land off of Moyle Ave that was originally molar, packed, molar, and, and sold the lower line here. So we just bought that and we're planning, we have eight acres, so we're planning to build a home in the next one. So the sewer main goes down Lamoille Avenue. Okay. And there's a right of way. Do you, is that a right of way or is that? After going through the whole process, it's According to the deeds for the lot that's existing there, which is Hanley, um, they own from the Royal Lab into their property, and we have a right of way, 25 foot right of way originally. And then it go after about 100 feet, it goes to a 45 foot right of way, the full length of his property for maintenance, utilities, and access to the rest of the property. Okay, so, so we have a right of way through there. We do not own from the same route into our property. So there is a a deeded area that utilities could be placed in the ground. Okay. 
Um, do you know exactly where your house site is going to be? Have you identified? It's going to be up in the sand. Okay. So that's the two, 250, 300 feet away. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> more than 300 feet. Because 300 feet is a number. No, where their house is, the corner of the, the foundation of the house will be at that is just under 300. To the main. Oh, all the way to the main. So, uh, so I think I. But our personal judgment of thought, and I mean, I got the ordinance they here. Do. We don't abut any street alley or right away that has a sewer main on it. Which, according to the ordinance, right? You have that deep, part of you have needed access to it, though. You have, right. yeah. That's okay. that. That could be argued, and just for yeah. I agree with you, but it could also be argued for the sake of the ordinance. I'm not trying to take sides. I'm just want to provide all the facts. Well, it does say uh, that situated on a parcel abutting any street alley or right of way, but you have a right in which oh, in which yeah. there's a public yeah. sewer main. Got it. Yeah. Right. And our right away doesn't have a main. Oh, a sewer main. But your parcel, if you, yeah, depends on whether you include the right of way as part of the parcel, I guess, in that definition, right? But if you did, then why would it say right away? Mm -hmm. Because, well, yeah, I guess because you could, because you could also have a sewer main running on the right of way, I guess. Right. Because we have rights away with sewer mains, like the town has rights away with sewer mains, places that are not streets or, so you could be close to one of those and not a street. Right, it's uh, right away that has a sewer main. Right. Yeah. Like we have one that goes down the long. Right. The right. right. So, um, so my questions are, so you guys are, are looking for a um, variance from the ordinance to not have to put in, not have to connect to our sewer, right? Correct. Water or sewer. No, they no, water. Water. The water ordinance doesn't give you an option not to. Oh, you're in the village, in the village limits. We're in the village limits. So. Yeah. Oh, this one gives you an option not to if it's with those. But you're within 300 feet. And blah, 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 blah. We can wave it. If there's severe construction limitations or excessive cost or unusual lot characteristics, according to our ordinance. So what does unusual know. lot carry? That would be like if, if you would have to pump it, like if the elevation and you'd ledge. have to put a lift station in. Yeah, or a ledge that you couldn't dig through. Right. The sewer has to go downhill, water can go everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was under pressure. Talks about leach fields and so, so, so that would that, that would be I would consider that email evidence of a, a perk test. Yeah, you did do a perk. Mm -hmm. And Patrick's a licensed designer, mm -hmm. uh, so, state certified licensed designer. So that's part of the ordinance is evidence of a successful perk test. I would consider that evidence of a successful perk test. Got it. So but is that just so I understand? Is that also evidence that it so? So yes, they can they can do it. But is that what you were just asking, Eric, in terms of our ordinance? Yeah, I was just going down the road of um, yeah, just looking at our reading through our ordinance. It it sounds to me, and I I understand that this is like open for debate, but it sounds to me that it's a parcel where there's a proposed house that's the footprint is going to be within 300 feet of a sewer main in the village. So if you argue that it's not abutting the sewer, sewer main, that's one thing. But if you say, except that it is, then the select board could waive the requirement either A, because of severe construction limitations or excessive cost, or B, unusual lot characteristics, which, as Opie pointed out, would be like elevation things typically, probably, or ledge. Either of those things exist. Either. It doesn't seem like either of those things are the case. Just Because, um, so, 
All right, so you guys are here. What's your appeal to us? Like, why why should we uh, why why should we say yeah okay do a do your own private septic instead of hooking up to our municipal sewer plan? Well, a lot a lot of the fault is basically the sound system in itself because it's a sand bed. Yeah, it's going to save us money, obviously, and we're Right at the edge of the 300 foot net. Okay. So it could be more than 300 feet. Hard to find it with the house back. Really, really close, and we have to talk to your left in front of the other day, too. And, you know, he's like, yeah, you're, you know, you're about 250 to 300 somewhere in there. So my concern, but, you know, my thing too is I don't, you know, I, the way I read mm. number twelve, we, you know, we have bought a right of way, but that right of way doesn't have a seat. So, I mean, that's where I think. <clears throat> but that is your that is it's your a, property. That's what it's a utility easement. Yeah, to so that's your connection to the main that street. That I think. I mean, I'm, like I, like I said, I'm not taking sides, but that could be argued that that is access to the sewer main. It's not like you have to get an easement from another property owner to access the sewer. You have a, a, a utility right of way. Have you, have you saw a state wastewater permit? That's what Patrick is doing. But we, so, you know. so once we get whether <clears throat> we can put in our own or we have to talk to them. They'll do the design and so yeah, so I you know I don't know what I should do because I was I asked the one and they told me no. So <laughs> well, I mean just to give you four lots. Just to give you a like I'll give you a the point blank answer, like we're in the business to collect wastewater to increase our revenues to be able to pay for the wastewater plant. I think you understand that. So for us to, well, for the town to say, to grant somebody permission to not be on our, we're, we're kind of letting the money go down another drain. <laughs> so right, just like that's, so the, that's how I look at it. But I, I see both sides. Right. And the flip side of that is we've also talked about people that our, our water system goes beyond our sewer system. So if we have people that are wanting village water and then they decide they want village sewer in Mango, for example, then we're going to be on the hook for putting that infrastructure in. So it's, it's a tough one. It's a yeah. tough one. Yeah, we're, I think about it more in terms of so whether you guys hook up or don't hook up doesn't really have any appreciable impact on our right. system or our funding or anything. What so the result of is the precedent? Because I've got four more lots I can tell you right now. I'm not going to hook on to if this goes through. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was right at 300 feet. Who's 289 or something like that? I mean, I looked at it wasn't a question. It was not a, did not no option. You're part of that same sand vein too, right? Yeah, absolutely the same sand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your front doesn't get so, you uh, No, no, it's good sand. Uh, so I live over on Macville Road, which is on the other side of the hill from the place, So and I totally understand. Move your house so we don't have to argue. <laughs> <laughs> so I would take a tape measure out. I, I mean, I, I mean, it's, if it's 300, I'm all good with doing it. But if it's 290, I'm not. You know what I mean? Because the next measurement from the center of foundation. Um, yeah, since yeah. the edge any, of the foundation. Any edge. Any edge. Any part of the foundation. Yeah, uh, that was, you're right thing. away. You're right <laughs> away. So I don't know where it's. When you're right away. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It has to follow your right of where yeah, it's going to go. Basically, basically that's right that's that's what the distance is from from the main to your house um, because that's what i did i went right up over the hill and yeah. i even had to put a little you know to get over a grade because i had so much grade and it still was 
And that's what put me over. If I could have went straight up the hill, it would have been under 300, but I couldn't because it was too steep. But your house was already there and you couldn't no. move it. Is it a new we, house? No, this is a new house. Eric, do we, yeah. need to, do we need to make a motion for this or is it just a comment? We're, we're not where we're, well, unless, I mean, you can table the. Unless somebody wants to make a motion. I mean, if you want, are you feeling you want, you want to move that we. Well, uh, I, what, what, what it sounds like from the board and what my understanding of the ordinance is, is that this does not, this would not fit currently as an exception to the ordinance. That's what I'm hearing is that according to um like if it's what it sounds like is if the building was farther away then yes it could then then it's not a very there could be um, if it's right. far away from feet then we don't have to grant a variance if it's within 300 feet we're supposed to grant a variance which is the conversation we're having and then the the conditions under are you know we're supposed to take but it doesn't sound like, such as it doesn't sound Right. It doesn't sound like those conditions exist in this ask. Is that what I'm hearing? That's my take. Right. But if you guys, it, it so might, it might be. Yeah. I don't have to come back here. Correct. Be there there. That's what I'm reading. I think so. If you tell me it's more than 300. I'm not coming up and measuring it. So <laughs> don't send me up. We're trying to get off the hook here. About no, the but decision. well, because I feel like well, you don't we, have a reason for a variance. we don't have a reason for a variance. So. But if you go measure the way your sewer line has to go through that right away and then goes to your foundation and that's more than three hundred feet, then I'm what I'm reading is you're, that you're, you're not you compelled to join right. the system. Is that correct, Mr. Yeah. Upson? Seems Sounds good way. to me. I mean, that's it. It's pretty simple. That's how it's writing. It looks it to me. That's quite frankly, all we have there now is a stake in the ground of the approximate right. center of the house. So right. go, go measure where it oh, is. If it, if it turned, if you measure it and yeah, turn it, do something. <laughs> but that's what I know where you're talking about. So you're out by the first place, right? So it's right. Like, I don't think you have to go very far. Right? If you got eight acres, you, you must be out there pretty close to that. What's that? You must be pretty, you know, you're not talking 300 out there. Because that, that, that first stretch of that narrow. First stretch is 100. Right away, it's under feet. Right. And it's yeah. pretty easy to go on another 200 feet. Yeah, I would think you'd be able to do that and then not have any question. There you go. Okay. Are we okay? okay? All right. You get that thing out there at 300 feet, and you're good to go. Okay. And we'll adjust our ordinance in the meantime. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, we're not, you know, more on top of it. But here we are. Uh, uh, welcome to Harvard. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, where are we? Number five. Thank you. Number five, Jesse Upson and Christine Burke are here to discuss with the select board the concept of the community center being part of the town operations, becoming the Hardwood Community Center. So, Jesse. Teen Center back. The Teen Center. Hi. Hi. Yes, I'm Jesse Upson and Chris. And last time we were here, we um, asked for some money for software, which the town has since um, defined directly. Um, and now we are here um, in, in kind of going down that rabbit hole, we realized that not knowing what model we are is holding us back um, and doing a bit of research and happy to have people. Um, it seems like the most sense, um, this makes it for this to be part of the town. Um, and we come up with kind of a, a plan for the next few months, um, with startup costs and, um, seeing what it is. 
Oh, so the discussions um, and then seeing what if anything that um, can help with and um, if not, we'll mm -hmm. fundraise. So when you say become part of the town, like a department of the town, like we're we talking about an employee, are we talking about being like you you want budget through the town? What are we what are we talking about? Talking about the, the committee. So the building is already part of the town. It's being paid for by the town. Um, so this is not necessarily having employees. This is just the actual community center. Up Which building are we talking about? I'm sorry. The police department. Okay. The other half. The senior, senior center. The senior center. Senior center, center, center side. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you know, if they be in a life for property, yeah. Yeah. Um, but this to get it up and going needs some new paint, a new floor, um, pretty you know, not too much cosmetically, but um, enough to need some help doing that. Um. And then um, getting the software that the town is already purchasing functional to set up with different groups. Can you speak more to that? Yeah, and that part is um, the software is more about we've been talking to early adopters, like people from you know the civic standard and part of Rescue and school and different people who are in part wanting to use the collaboration software and also the community space. For different purposes and so we wanted to bring them together first in the software so they can start communicating but also to do visioning um to help the individual individuals and individual representatives of organizations to um kind of land on a shape like what's a win-win for you and your organization and the town and the people of the town right so it's, it's three three wins but um, not asking people to get involved to be volunteers or make a contribution, but asking people to come get involved in ways that create win-win-win outcomes so that it's self-sustainable, so that everybody feels like being involved in community center, making contributions to the town, getting involved in needs assessment and fulfillment benefits them as well as the community members yeah. I once read a book. I think it was Sweet Thursday by John Steinbeck, but it may have been Cannery Row. I'm not sure which, but there it was Sweet Thursday. There was a character named Hazel who was arguably one of the stupidest persons who ever lived. <laughs> but Hazel had been convinced somehow that he was destined to be president of the United States. And it terrified him. And he tried to think it through. And Steinbeck said, what Hazel was trying to do was to create a statue with pea soup. And as I'm listening to what you're saying, I feel like all I'm working with is pea soup. Um, like, I don't know enough. You you came here before and asked for, for software, and mm -hmm. it seemed like a good idea. And now you've taken it another piece further. And I realize I don't really have any clear image of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Do you have a set of bylaws? Do you have mission statements? Do you have anything that I could get, you know, something solid about what it really is that you're doing? Um, yeah, so the proposal that we submitted was about wanting to help people to get out of fight or flight, get out of survival mode, um, and get into, you know, emotional well-being, right, into a state of being able to function. Um, there's, there are people that need help for that, and then there are a lot of organizations, institutions, people here in town who are working on initiatives like that, but doing them separately. And so what our purpose was, was have to bring them together. Remember the body that we said we'd like to kind of create the central nervous system mm -hmm. and bring these people 
bring together who are the resources, what are they contributing, what's available in the town, what do people need, um, and how do we help people to find out what's available in a shared virtual space as well as in a community center, potentially staffed by volunteers, right? So it's like oh. a new there's there's a right currently there's a disconnect between the people that want to help and the people that need help mm -hmm. and there's I, so, oh, sorry Opie. And no the, i was just gonna say i i hope this answers your question wiz um is i think it's a good one um it sounds like and correct me if i'm wrong jesse and christine that that basically what um jesse and i had a conversation last week about they it sounds like there are a lot of questions about do we become our own organization do we come become a nonprofit? like this is very new they've identified that the public um that the pd building is has great potential that this is needed in hardwick but there's still work that needs to be done to figure out the structure that needs to figure out things like bylaws um but before doing that, because there are lots of nonprofits and lots of organizations, um, as Christine was just saying, it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jesse, that the, that the ask is, can kind of quote unquote operating under the town help to get this project off the ground before, um, you know, like there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done but it's also like in the beginning stages so there's not like i don't know if there are certain things that can be answered until this is tried and we were able to see how it works and if if the ask is to basically have a bunch of volunteers and um and have some money go to supporting the building um is that is that more of like what is being asked jesse yeah. and christine like like okay. Can 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 we maybe apply for some grants? Can can the town help support this project? Maybe similar to the way that we supported the downtown designation project. Like, can we have them under our wing as they get up and running? And then like, and, um, but but maybe there are more questions. Like, well, what does that actually? What would it mean for us as a town? Like, what would be what would we be on the hook for if that were the case? Is that kind of your question, Wiz? I wanna know what they're really requesting. Are you looking for a blind item on the budget? Are you looking for permission to use the building? Are you looking for you know, permission to use staff time? It's just not really clear what you're envisioning when you say you know, functioning as under the town. Right. So part of the visioning thing is that we actually want to invite people in the organizations and institutions and whatnot from the town in to do to be involved in collaboratively visioning how they might use that space to better meet the needs of townspeople. And also even getting, you know, we have a lot of high school kids dropping out. We need we can get one or two of them to come be involved in this early adopter and like what what can we um develop here what could be available to you here that would make a difference in so, your so what we know is that there are needs in the town that are being met i and, understand that and we we but know but mine's a very nitty-gritty sort of what are you asking the town to provide well, you for, to be underneath the town. For right now, we're asking for some money to help put into the building. And, okay. and a way also for us to, if we do apply for rent grants, to be able to go through the town to get them. Okay. And to find out if the town is willing or able to financially support. Like we've been working on this for six months. Um, and you know, that's great. We've been plotting along and now we're saying now there's this phase of like, you know, going around planting the seeds, talking to people, finding out if they were even interested in um, getting connected with a collaboration. Have you got a budget? We've got a start of the budget. That's, that's what, this. That's out, what this is. So this is the first okay. time. There's, so we could, there's some pieces of this that if there's su successful components of this will 
could potentially save us money within the police budget in the long run. Um, we've talked about bringing dispatching back. If we staff, if we staff this building 24 seven with either volunteer, trained volunteers or part-time staff, police department staff, we pay the sheriff's department um, 30, almost $40,000 a year mm -hmm. in dispatch services. Mm -hmm. So with successful participation by the community and trained volunteers, trained part-time staff, we could potentially keep those dollars in Hardwick, have somebody answering the phone in Hardwick when somebody is in crisis and calls. So that's just that's just one piece of this. Um, the city of Brattleboro just put in a, a Can... pilot project for um, their police department. They're hiring civilians now to field calls to receive citizen law complaints and triage um, calls to the police. So there's like, this is the state, this is phase one, I think, you know, the way it's, it's presented of trying to put together something that will kind of hold up our town with some of the needs that aren't being met, We're providing the need, providing. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to say, can we, it sounds like, um, and I'm sorry, I'm not there in person to see see everything, but um, it sounds like there is some like fairly low hanging fruit, like just fixing, like putting a new coat of paint on the building and getting things to a place where it's comfortable and accessible for people to use the building that seems like one ask and then there's this other bigger question of like what actually is going to be happening and how that's going to fit in to the Hardwick budget and our various projects which I don't know if we're going to be able to answer that tonight like it, it sounds like and correct me if I'm wrong Wiz that's kind of like the question and how the town's supporting that I don't know if there's enough information for us to be able to say tonight how we can support it but but maybe we can answer tonight how we can support the building um, and some of the upgrades that are needed for the building. We do have the opioid settlement money that we're getting um, annual payments of. And that money is should be directed back into a community effort to prevent substance abuse and in youth and substance abuse and young adults. And part of the population that we want to serve at the community center is that targeted population. So you're suggesting that this money would come out of that money? It's not going to add to the tax? It's money that we got in the settlement that we put back into that building. How much is that? Um, over the- We've received 5,600 and we're going to get about 10,200 total. We've gone, yeah, for a while. And we haven't spent any of it? We just got the like in the last six months we've gotten two payments. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so it seems to me that that building. I guess I have two thoughts about the building, the community. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole building, really. I mean, it's our building, and mm -hmm. we should be maintaining it because mm -hmm. it's our building. Mm -hmm. um, it should be. I think our intent is to have that end open. I think that the seniors have lunch there whenever they have lunch there, and that's There's part days. of the agreement. Yep. Um, but otherwise, I know Mike's had programming in there sometimes sure. um, that he's led. And so I would imagine that it would be open to this type of programming. Mm -hmm. I would also suggest that it's already functional, that building. Yes. Like it could have upgrades, mm -hmm. but you can walk in, there's heat, there's electricity. You know, interweb. Yeah, yeah. I did that. I have that agreement with consolidated. Yeah, to run fiber in there. So right. I so I mean I, I guess I don't have a problem yeah. with that using that, that money for the community project like this. I'd like to see it move forward. Yeah, I'd like <laughs> to. I'd like to see it. Yeah, I don't know. I'd like to pull the trigger on right. something. I still, I guess personally, I'm still in, in Wiz's. Camp where I'm still I get struggling it. to I hear you loud and clear. It. So I I, I do too. So well, who's gonna get this money? I mean, you've got this date completion date and you've got a total of three thousand dollars, sixty dollars and fifty dollars an hour, or sixty hours and fifty dollars an hour. 
but all you have is what will be accomplished software setup software outboarding training complete research so that this is what's going to happen but i don't see who's going to do this that's the who's question about the department that, that's the that's the department part of the question is sorry we know who's the department's going to be well um <laughs> Like there are some like We're, sub grants could be written under the town based on uh, for like any cake funds, for instance, that no the five thousand dollar amount you potentially a grant could be written and maybe Tracy would be able to at least advise on it. Maybe not spend all of her time writing it, but you guys would be able to collaborate. No, I mean there are ways to. There are some resources out there. That aren't taxpayer money. Well, and we, we have this opioid settlement, but this it there just feels like real fuzzy. Yeah. Real, real well, mushy. I mean, from my perspective, that's because it is. It's something that we've never done before that it hasn't, you know, I, I've seen other community centers and other places, but this is like um something new. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so a lot of these things are unknowns, are like, you know, give us some feedback as to what, you know, how this works from your end of things. We'll take it, you know, and we'll take a step it, forward. It was part of the community visit. It was one of the three things that came out of the community visit that, at least for kids or teens, that they wanted to have some sort of a community center. Um, and but that was like thinking, a swimming pool and ice cream. We got to start. We got to start with this stuff before we can have that stuff. I mean, no. so at this at this point, at this point, I just think in terms of our budget, which is what we're asking, we have this opioid settlement money, which comes out of the PD department. It is also the public safety building, which is also under basically the PD department. So we have like we basically have this line item of revenue that right now doesn't have an expense because we don't have a program that really fits with why we got that money. Well, and so if, if basically what we're saying is that we support these volunteers helping to make some upgrades to the building with that money, with that op opioid resettlement money, then those bigger questions, those can wait. If, if basically the only money that we're giving, quote unquote giving, is that is that money that's already been earmarked for these kinds of projects, then we could wait for a later date to have a conversation about the bigger question about this organization or initiative and how later down the line the town might support it. If there's not really the ask of like creating a line item, I don't really see the risk because we're not like we're not saying, okay, we're going to give you ten thousand dollars for the next five years for this project. We're just saying this this is in alignment with why we got this money and it'll help support our building it'll help support our community it's not a big financial risk for us right now what kind of reporting requirements does that money have with it just, that no, we can just, um, it's take the money and so, go to acapulco with no no so no so here's the, this is like a common misconception that the this opioid settlement money is going to the police Okay, o opioid addiction, substance abuse, and the, this whole epidemic, the police had to deal with it, but it affected the community, Everybody it affected tries. families, it affected schools. So the, the, it's not earmarked it to the police to. department, and it continues. Okay. So we could go out and buy $10,000 worth of Narcan with it. So actually, that's exactly what I was thinking, because I was thinking- um, But is that really solving the problem of substance abuse? It is not. Right. Right. Or we just leave them in the river. No. What about because we're still going to have ones in the river right now. Yes. And is our is our police department currently off operating at or under budget for this fiscal year that we're in? On um, they're no, they're over. They're right over. Yeah. And so our police department are pulling people out of the river, and. This is some, and we're over budget doing that. And we have an unexpected small amount of money coming in on the revenue side. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just not thinking that that is completely unallocated money. Like, I, no, it's I, but I it's heard, not. It's not. It's not earmarked for the right. PB. Not it was sort right. of unexpected revenue. Right. Yeah. Right. But we're, if you just gave it to the PD, then you destroy it. At least yeah. this way. Exactly. Well, we need to zoom out. We need to like figure out that this isn't working and we need to figure out how to start making it work because kids are dropping out of high school. Sorry, I'm really emotional about this, but I talked to Matt who's running over at the health center and he's like, I had someone in my office the other day call 988 and no one answered the phone. That's the suicide hotline. Like, our resources are not working, they're overwhelmed, and we need to be taking care of our community. And that's what we're trying to do. And I like I've talked to a lot of amazing leaders in this town who are incredible resources who want to be doing more and want the capabilities to be doing more and don't have space, don't have the connections. And that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to make those connections. I've already been in touch with a few people from the police department from like that um want to like they you know were um heavy on the resources and they you know, I've been speaking with them and they want to turn around and be volunteers and help and they they know how aware work, they know how all of these services work because they've been in them and they want to feel like they can give back. And there's a lot more of those people available once we start doing this. And I think the more opportunities we give our community to give back to our community, like with the software, have a page where we can, how you can volunteer, things that are going on, calendar. So many people don't know what's going on in town. Like give them ways to connect and come in and have a cup of coffee when you're having a hard time. A police call that you know doesn't have a crime Bring, bring them back to the community center, have them meet with someone, chat with someone, so we know what's going on in the community and we can better take care of the people. We, we like to say that we want to resolve, you know, we have so many services here that they're solving the problem, that the fire starts and they have to run and solve it. We really want to start laying some groundwork for resolving it so that we don't get so many emergency calls. So just to go back to, thank you both, just to go back to our agenda item, it, this, like as it's presented on our agenda is that this is a discussion about yeah. a concept. Yeah. So I'm gonna, it's not actually an action. I'm gonna propose that we continue to have this conversation that somebody from the town manager's office works with Jesse and Christine to figure out what, like a lot of the questions that were asked tonight. So that way we can properly know moving forward how we can support this project. Unless there's another ask that that you need, Jesse and Christine. Like, I don't think we need an official motion. It doesn't seem like we do, other than a nod or like, am I wrong in that? That this is not really like an action item right now, but really a let's pursue this or not kind of question. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And when we want to know the next step, like, is this something that we can, you know, the, the town wants to support and whatever, what that, whatever that looks like? And if so, what are the next steps? What do you need from us? What do you, you know, what can we expect? So town managers go. I think the, the purchase of the software, which they the board has already agreed with, and the if you could offer the training for the software to the different organizations that have expressed interest in joining this soft the software mm -hmm. collaborative mm -hmm. i think if we could get that that you you would be willing to do the training we purchase the software and we start there great we, we already voted to approve that right yeah. so that's yeah. just yeah yeah but i but i so we don't need to take any action there so well because that's part of the the, the first phase of uh, the, the money so which is which pretty much been that's already been approved right the purchase of the software yes so we can't purchase software well. without training right that's user. what i'm saying so yep. don't we need to say spend some of that opioid money to, to do this training who's going to do the training are you going to do the training yeah right so so 
they're volunteering to do this. That can be considered in kind. But, in kind but for what a, purpose? Dollar amount. Just yeah. we just try we to get the hang on to that. Keep track. We of keep track of it. Right. Yep. So that a grant proposal comes along, you've yep. already done this much in right. kind. Right. Yep. Yeah, I talk about the consultant role and I actually did this implementation and implementation. So it presented in a way that I think, um, and I don't know how the town looks at it. You know, I'm deeply discounted, of course, recognizing some of the good money to do the improvements on the building. Right. Do we need to say something about that or do you just do it? Um, I think I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I'm good with that. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Within your yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. and that's the, part of and, your job. And the community and the seniors are picking out the colors. Oh, I was yeah. told today they have some color swatches. Swatches, <laughs> swatches. Fourteen shades of gray. Oh, well, there's a lot of turquoise. And stuff. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. So lavender. What? No maybe, purple? maybe lavender. Okay, we're good. Let's Thank you. Budget. Thank you guys for coming. We're ahead of schedule. No, 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 no such thing. Just kidding. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Um, all right. So, I'm a little clearer on what they're doing now than I was earlier. So, I'm a little clearer, yeah. I understand what they're doing. They're trying, they're the trying to fix something that's broke and they don't know how. Right. Yeah. We're not 100% sure how we're going to fix it. Now. We're looking at that flat tire right now. Right. We're about yeah. ready to dig into the trunk. Yeah. And start to get the tools. Yeah. No, closer. that's exactly it. Yeah. We, we just got to figure out. How Put those pieces okay. together. I'm moving us forward to the budget. Move us. Back. Move us. Library and trails are here. It is who wants to go first? Well, can I go first because she wants to see Yes. Okay. So you all have copies. Hang on. We do. It's better finding. Oh it's the very last one. It's the very last one. No, it's the very last one. Trail budget. No, it's right. balance. That one. Got it. All right. Carry on. Please state your well, name, Norma Spalding. Uh, oh, you already did, Norma Spalding. I'm here again. Uh, um, well, do you have any questions? <laughs> That's a beautiful way to start. Thank you. <laughs> Look it over. I guess you guys are all to decide what the budget is. There are certain things that really um, we don't have a whole lot of control over. Right. Right. Like the last um, insurances, that huge increase in the last insurance is mostly because we haven't really been accounting for the equipment that we have. That's that's partly my fault because I was talking to Casey and Amanda, and they were like, "You have two skidoos." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's the huge. I mean, we basically haven't budgeted for what we have. The skidoos. The, it's very unfortunate that they now know we have all this that, equipment. That we have all the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> so we're being honest this year on that last, on the insurance. Norma, the only thing that jumped out at me on this is the publicity advertising signage. Mm. That you budgeted four hundred dollars last year, you spent yeah. seventy nine, and you want four hundred again. Um. So this year, so far, we spent two hundred and six dollars. So we've already spent a lot of the budget this year. That year before, we didn't, but this year, this this year already we spent over two hundred. This season, right? That, so. So out of the four hundred, just an off year, like it was an off year. Yeah, yeah. it was a COVID year. There wasn't COVID that much. Okay. There wasn't much going on. We didn't make new maps. We're making new maps right now. Mm -hmm. We are trying to use the um, spark to do some of our signage, mm -hmm. uh, but and then Aaron was so nice to made some signs for us. That's true. I did. So that year we didn't have much, but this year we've already spent. Well, yeah, this year we're trying to so. add additional of those maps and different things in so. the different kiosks that we have. Uh, right. So we're going to need some big maps. So we're going to do those, I think, next part. So it, it's going to be a little cheaper to acquire some digital maps. All right. More questions about trails? No. No. Oh, Question, Kaylee? You good? All good. 
So good. Yeah. Ignore my fast track your stuff. Not library. <laughs> sorry. Hey, sorry. I'm just starting to feel it. Dirty, I can't see you. Please state your name. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I don't <laughs> Here for another delightful evening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daphne. Thank you, Daphne. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we are up this year for two particular items one is fuel and the other is insurance. Okay, got it. Fuel and insurance. Fuel and insurance, yes. Um, I assume the insurance is because you've Hired a person with a family, yes, instead of oh. just a single person. Yeah, right. So it's a huge hit. Wow, it's a huge hit. Yes. So a little up here. It happens every time. It happens on the highway. It happens on PD. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Too bad you couldn't discriminate. Just kidding. <laughs> Good joke. Single people only. Okay. It's getting late. Yeah. It's too bad. It's just hired single people with no kids. It's too bad we don't have a universal yeah. healthcare system. Yeah. So we got lucky. Yeah. Lucky yeah. All these years, and now it's it was very unlikely we were going to do that again. So, yeah. Um, so we that's were, yeah, the, that's the big change. How different that was. But I can't. We did go down a little on salary because we we're hiring someone who doesn't have the level of experience um, in terms of going to the role, but um. So we had some savings on insurance. I mean, on payroll, but offset by the insurance. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Why did your internet go down? It's that... free. Um, it's because we're just doing it differently. Previously, oh, I thought um, it was free. We, they have um first light, and the way yeah. it works is they get like these credits on their bill, yeah. and so we're often carrying a credit balance. Well. At one point, the auditor said, oh, you know, gross up those credits as revenue and then, you know, net it and then show your expense higher. Well, now they've said, no, don't do that. Just just pay the bill when it's due and, and let the credits accumulate. So that's why it changed. So like they really do only pay maybe four months out of 12 at $250. So this is an right? actual, this is yeah. actual. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's, it's just kind of a, a change in how we're looking at it. Fair enough. Makes my life easier. <laughs> okay, that's good. More questions about the library budget. This is this is more about cosmetics. I suspect that it is substance, but I'm used to seeing parentheses meaning a negative, yep. a reduction, and I see all these friends of the library things are all listed as negatives. Really? I mean, where is that? No, it's just bottom. At the bottom. At the, at the bottom. bottom those listed as negatives, I think, because they're taking off from the total. Correct. Yeah, they're, exactly. Yeah. So, like, you take their operating and library building, you add those two together, and then you subtract essentially the courier revenue, the miscellaneous income, and the fund balance contribution to show what they actually need from the town. That's just yeah. before I'm yeah, it's it's just a little just like and yeah. then the hundred twenty five thousand dollar town appropriation <laughs> that was actual in fiscal year twenty two. I'm sorry, what Casey? That was the actual amount in fiscal year twenty two because your your left column is actual, so the actual appropriation was one twenty five one seventy one in, in last fiscal year. And so the fund balance is what's left over. They have their own. The fund, right. The fund balance was what was left at as of 630, 22, 17,631. Mm -hmm. Last purchase of budget, I saw had 14,000 before. Well, right, but that might be in the current year now. <clears throat> that 17. No, the, um, the fund balance contribution for 2020. Okay, so when Lisa and I talked, I, I, maybe she must, maybe we weren't clear, but I said to her, I was like, it, it just said miscellaneous income for oh, okay. And I said, I so, so we need to split that out. So they split those into two. Correct, because there's going to be some miscellaneous income. There was almost 2,900 in fiscal year 22. So we okay. did 4,000. 
But if you had intended to do miscellaneous income plus 14,000 and fund balance contribution, that would decrease the ask to 142,967, which is certainly, I mean, that because that's leaving a $7,600 buffer in the fund balance. So that's certainly something. It was seven, oh, I thought it said it's 600 now. Yeah, we could do a little better. I don't know that we want to go under. Um, well, we need some for emergencies. Daphne, what we yeah, have? I don't know. Huh? The more we can keep in that fund for unknowables, the better. Mm -hmm. It tells us and we have quite a bit. Particularly <laughs> since we were the building here. But, um, we are going to need, we are going to need at least a thousand of it uh, for innovation and private party and et cetera. Hawaiian retreat. Hawaiian retreat. <laughs> so, because there is going to be some miscellaneous income, so we leave that fourth out from the phone. But what do you, what are you thinking for the fund balance contribution? So that leaves us fifty six. Okay, so then that lowers their ask to one forty four nine sixty seven. So, so. Can we? Can I just ask about the grant that the friends are writing, or who are the oh, friends? Oh, right. We need to circle back the CRP oh. grant that Andrea is writing. Yeah, that's that's not this grant. That's for building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we yeah. so you weren't here. So early, we we started to talk about it. I don't see any way. The budget is the budget. Okay. Pen drop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We ask that question. The budget, the budget. And you see all those zeros in the column with change. Yeah. We're There's not, not a whole lot you can do with that. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, so then. Yeah. So what's like? And we're not interested in slashing it. So. Right. Right. It is what it is. Right. And especially in this. Let's point, hope the new that. librarian with her family hangs around for a while. It's, His family. Yes. Oops, sorry. He's oh. there. So do we know who the room's her family? Oh. <laughs> we have that stage stance, and we are hiring Diane Grindle. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Our um, oh, candidate. We didn't want to be the ones to tell you. Yes. <laughs> well, good. Long production, yeah. yes. Wasn't she good. children? Yeah. She was she was like a like her. Yeah. yeah. No, what is good. to the guy from Kentucky? The guy from Kentucky, um, unfortunately, had a family crisis. Oh, no. Um, well, I would much rather have someone from Mango than I would from Kentucky. Well, much more likely to stay. <laughs> well, not only that, I mean, they, I mean, no, he people. was very qualified. But I'm really His wife is from St. John's, right? Oh, oh. No. But you know what I'm saying. I'm very happy. To the, see yeah. the yeah. Diane's with Diane's experience, she can hit the ground running. Yeah, she, um, she, able to do the she won't have to. Yeah, she yeah. knows everybody. She knows how it works. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I don't think like it's, it's, it's I don't look at any bad news for that guy. But so yeah. yeah, we were probably going to pay the same insurance either way, and right, because, uh, yeah, we saved a little bit of money. <laughs> so. So what came up before was we were the manager's report in the very beginning of the select board meeting, the manager's report, we were talking about um, a grant for CRRP grant. Oh, yeah, the craft grant. CRRP doesn't My God, focus people. Let's go. So, um, yeah, so we were talking about that in our question. We had questions and we said, let's just wait till Jody's here and we'll circle back. So this is not to do with your budget, but with that grant manager's report requires right. a letter of support from the, or, or there's a request for a letter of support from the town. And we were wondering, I guess, what were we wondering? Well, my, I was wondering where, 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 where the project is at. Okay, so you were wondering that, and then Sherry was wondering different. what particularly um, were. The we... select board has a policy that we see the grant narrative. So we see what is mm -hmm. being applied for. I don't know whether Tracy's gotten to see that, whether, uh, I mean, is there a match to that grant? What is that grant? What's the amount? What what will, yeah, I get that it's supposed to go to the building because everything does now, mm -hmm. but what is it? What, what are we supporting? Yeah, so uh, the grant is state um, ARPA funds that have um, several, four categories. 
Um, municipal is all wastewater, but there's also a category for um, libraries. No, no, this is not that grant. This is a category that's this is for pandemic affected entities. And Andrew's writing this grant. Um, I have actually not done a round of edits yet, so I haven't exactly seen how she's crafting the ask around pandemic influence, but um it's worth it. It's it's worth the try. It's a first come, first serve grant. And it's um they have a big pot of money. How much? And what's the forty, is it 40 million? million? But the, what's the amount that the grants are being given for? They they have there's no there's there. no max. So yeah, uh, it's a rolling say, it's a see, rolling see, deadline. We're yeah. looking to see the narrative that answers all those questions. Okay, yes. we will share the narrative with the answers to all those questions. Okay, and, uh, and the yeah. and the total last. The core last will be six hundred thousand, I believe, okay. and we're going to ask for the same amount from the Department of Libraries, okay. because we believe that's the most we could possibly need to get this building built. I don't think we need that much. This Still six hundred thousand, sure. Well, that's we don't know because we don't have a budget yet. We have so the update is that we moved to a construction management model. Right. We hired um, a company out of Burlington called Vyark who um, have been astounding, made a, a huge video about why they wanted this job and all they were going to do. And the president of the company is from Newport, um, comes from a whole family of electricians and they own several electrical companies in Newport. And they have they have a, a mission to get the price down by really hitting on subcontractors and other things. So they stacked up the list. So it's a more collaborative process than our group. It's, um, so how much funding? And all of your funding sure, right. sources will. We have two point four million. I think we're going to need two point four million for a project that was originally supposed to be one point five. Um, At what point does it become too much? Well, I think the last bid was for three million. I think we're going to end up being able to build it. This is just. My making a guess, but I think with this group and um, not being at the peak of the inflation bubble, we um, will likely hit um, between 2.6 and 2.8. So, um, okay, so you're so back to the grant for a minute. So, you want a letter of support from us to apply to the CR, CRRP um, and uh w one thing we suggested earlier is that assuming that that's time sensitive and you don't want to wait for us sure. to review that in january sure. that um the select board could some we could make uh we could move to have the town manager the, the community development coordinator yeah but she could we have community development we could have the town manager um we'll provide see. a letter of support yeah after the details of the grant are shared with the community Ooh. development coordinator in the town. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so moved. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Can we adjourn? Second. Or do you have to go over the whole Any more discussion about providing a letter of support? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's for Jerry. Aye. Any opposed? Motion, motion carries. Oh yeah, with everybody. Good. So we got that. So thank you for the library. Thank you for the trails. Thank you for the library. Um, do we have to go? What else? What else? Can we go home? We have to go through the whole. The whole I got a few things I want to talk about and just kind of summarize. So um, one of the things that came up this afternoon is um, we really need to get an updated grant list figure because the figure that I last had was as of July 1st, 2022. It does appear that we've had some sort of significant increase. We're trying to get to the bottom of that so that I don't really want to talk about the tax rate because I think it's a lot better than it looks because I think once we have that actual correct grant list figure, I'll know more. Yeah. Um, but yeah. over this last two week period, um, just kind of, you know, some of the things that have come up um, is 
we received our 2023 insurance bills from the LCT, which then enabled me to get a better handle on what this would look like. That's good. Unfortunately, um, we have been sort of seeing this steady decrease for since I've been employed here. And we also were able to take um, what we call contribution credits um, for claims history and that sort of thing. Um, our contribution credits for 2023 are half of what they were last year. So um, again, so, and, and some of the insurances went up. So we, I've had to take that all into consideration. So all the insurances have been adjusted. Um, and is this, is this all in the budget that we were, that we saw, like if we look today in our yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I haven't okay. made any changes. Okay. Like it's just, I'm saying over so, the last two so, weeks. Like, so kind of the insurance numbers generally have been trued up according to an actual equitable Yeah. Plan. Okay. And so that's kind of, and as other little things came in here and there, I've been able to firm up different things. One thing that I did kind of want to talk about is health officer. Um, Eric's our health officer because we don't have a health officer or nobody wanted to step up to do it. It's been a discussion over the last couple of years about hiring somebody to do it. Um, is that anything that we, right now we just have like a $600 a year stipend. Um, there's been discussion about, wow, that's really, <laughs> you, will, you will, you will, will get it. Fun. No, you will get it. Oh, I will. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's a small stipend, but um, there is a lot to the job and there can be. And so um, it's, it's been brought up before, you know, do we want to hire somebody to do this? Does it, so wait, how does it stay? Well, I think John Joe did it, you're not. I am. Oh. Richard Brochu was our yeah, now we got you yeah, that's yeah. It's, not a small, it's not a small job. No, as you know now. So it's not a small job. I went to the training years ago, and I'm sure it's more work than it yeah. was. Well, there. we're about to get yeah. the rental inspections taken off our plate, hopefully. So that's well, the only guess, part of it, though. Yeah. But that's a pretty big part. It's not doing yeah. very much to help. Well, they're that, supposed to be. They passed a law. Well, that, but that's not enough. <laughs> anyway, so you're right. Do we want to? So, so but guess, who would do it? Well, that's what I'm saying. You'd you'd have to like post and be like, you that's know, either you increase the incentive for somebody to want to step up and do it, or you like literally. It's, well, it's it's her call, like for I every, suspect uh, that there are many people out there that don't even know what it is. And yeah. that it exists, which let's is, keep it which, that way. To, which goes back to my let's work on know, that. define yeah. what on these that. different positions yeah. are, so that if there are people out there interested in serving in them, so, so that is I actually did a front porch forum post a few of them back in April, May, before the yeah. position was going to expire, and that's what sparked the discussions. And people were like, "Wow, this is like crazy," and it's. A, Five hundred dollars. Like they were just kind of like, like why would anybody want to do that? Right. Because so, I put the the description. Here's what this person yeah. is supposed to do, and everybody was like, right. yeah, it's no. Really like, well defined. Yes. This is not. So I did, did do that. Yeah. It. I think times it could, could create a liability for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could we between That's now and put together a job description, put together a process so that we can build it into the budget. Can we build it into this budget at well, this late hour? Well, not tonight, but I, I guess we can talk about it for next week. Well, we I, wouldn't even know what the, I mean, I don't think we can start. I, just, I think uh, the job description is already defined. Yeah, the job description is done, but, yeah. but the process and yeah, yeah, but how do you hire somebody to to do a little a few hours of work random at random time? That's what I'm saying. You'd almost have to do it like you it's get like this the animal control so much per or, or, or something. Yeah. Worse. Yeah. You can't, Kayla, you're yeah, you can't take people to the camera. Okay, I'll just go ahead, Kayla. Yeah, I was just gonna say I was just gonna say, can we roll this conversation into the conversation about the community health uh, community center? No, we could, but I think they're very different it's things. Very different things. But anyway, I mean, we don't um, have to kind of carry on with that. I guess I'm just saying <laughs> it is something right. that has been brought up before, and we are in budget season. So anyway, 
Um, and then a couple, just a couple other little things. So I separated out the buildings, like their two worksheets now, because Ooh. like we had to take the I put yeah. highway, and so now we have all the buildings and buildings. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, underline items. The cemeteries had requested an additional eighteen thousand dollars for like stonework and this sort of thing. In my recent revisions, I sort of made a, a suggestion and proposed that we do six thousand over three years rather than eighteen thousand all at once because I don't really think that they can do all of the work in one year. Um, so that's just something I did to. I have a question about that anyway. The flow. I do too. Like those things should really, I mean, if the, so you've been researching, but it seems to me that the cemetery should have been managed over the years such that the- On their own. Yeah. That they would have perpetual On care. Their, yeah, have that to was, do that. I don't believe that's what occurred. Uh, uh, it does. I mean, if, if they are, they are- but the, yeah, or well, These are cemeteries that are- we're talking, yeah, Fairview and Main Street, the ones that are that request and Maple Street. Maybe there's three, like there's three of them. I think the yeah, there are uh, three. Right of, here. Yeah, Maple Street, Maple okay. Street, Fairview. Maple Street's been taken care of. The Daughters of the American Revolution are going to do the repairs. Okay, okay. but I'm I'm just thinking but structurally yeah. as organizations, they have their own commissioners, their own rules. They are expected. There are state laws that they're expected to follow that they don't. Um, allegedly, we don't and, confirm that. Pardon me, we have to confirm that. <laughs> um, if the town clerk's word is good for it, then yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and they should be self funding. That's the idea. Now, in the past, we have we have funded them, you know, it's not, yep. It's, it's, but this is asking for more funding for additional services. You know, that, that's, this is another issue that need, we the town needs to get its own cemeteries organized, and then this is right, a larger. Right. And that's why I just said, you know, the ask was eighteen thousand dollars, which we originally had in here. So I said, at the very kind of best case scenario, I would say we do six thousand over three years if you decide to do that. Is I, I just well, don't Casey, don't we, don't we already just talking? Just thinking about our own cemeteries, like separating this ask out from that, we already have a fund balance for cemeteries, correct? It's like roughly $17,000. For our cemeteries? That's already saved. Correct. It's in a capital fund. I remember seeing it in a capital fund. So it's a perpetual fund for the cemeteries? Like Sanborn has tens of thousands of dollars, like for that type of thing yeah. right um, right because we're because basically when we when we sell a lot we're we're giving that six to twelve hundred dollars to the town and it's earmarked for the cemetery right. um, in the but there's already a balance like we already have a balance a fairly healthy balance for cemetery for town cemeteries right some cemetery upgrades we have a balance uh, we have a capital and a regular though like that you're not seeing that but we have like the cemetery fund is completely separate from the general fund set aside for cemetery upgrades so that's an addition to the cemetery fund. right yeah right are we are we going to vote on this budget at the next meeting no, oh, I, no I think out, given the town meeting is on for March 7th, we're probably going to shoot to do it January 15th. Okay, could we talk about the cemeteries? Yes, yes. yes. Um, okay, so I think that's it for tonight. So just in the, um, in the summary here, so showing, I just barely got rid of two, you know, we took 2000 away from the library. So from the draft you had in your pocket, it just went down 2000. So 4.2% increase right now. That's a lot better than it looked last. Four yeah, percent. well, you know what it was? It, it was so it's a formula issue um, with like, because I was like, there's no way I will just swing up 400,000. It was, it was a formula issue when I checked it. So 
so relieved. Um, Blame it on Excel. And so well, that's why you literally have to go through every single, yeah. Is there a point when the listers are going to come off of the budget? Because we don't have this. They're not. Well, and so next year you won't see them. Yeah, there won't be yeah. any actual, but there's still an actual in fiscal year 22. Okay. So in, in that section, yeah. just the note that it says part-time and elected. Right. I think it's part it's part time and appointed. Oh, uh, right, right, Casey. Well, some is elected because there's select board in there. Oh, right. right. Then there's appointments as well. You're right. I mean, it's it's enough. you know, we could just call it as other people. Like, yeah, it's really. Yeah, it's it's so good, the first number. We'll do it next time. Yeah. So, next. so on your first page, Casey, you got the draft stamp red. Yeah. Percent increase, five point four one percent. Yeah. So, but that's with no uh, making out of cash. Out of yes, that is one hundred twenty-five thousand. Yeah. And then that is our real. Well, they're close. Yeah. We do have. We believe about forty-six hundred dollars in new appropriations this year. We haven't got all petitions, but we sort of. Been but the thing is that. So I, I spent some time looking, trying to like wrap my head around these percent increases today, and then I think what mm -hmm. Casey said earlier is there's no point in really focusing on these percent increases to the tax rate because we don't yet have a firm number. We, we're going to get a better estimated grand list. Because that's as of July 1st, and so I will have something updated, and I think that that's going to make those numbers look better. I thought the grand list never came in before like May or something. Right, but we get an estimate. Oh. So often, right. no, it's July 1 that it gets set, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why we don't set, we don't actually set the tax rate. That's why all this sheet, that top sheet is really a bit of mumbo jumbo and we're not both we're not voting on that we're voting on the budget the total dollar amount the total raised. dollar amount for the budget right. but um, this is just to give people an idea yeah of it's, it's just yeah it's just kind of a yeah exactly the, just a tool for them to sort of be like oh okay how much of my taxes may be going to go up kind of thing it's just but it but the trouble with that is idea. that we're only well, generally estimating the grand right? list right I mean, generally we get yeah, it's not. Well, we tell them at town meeting is generally what it is. I was looking back, and it, it varies a bit off of what was on the sheet, what actually the tax rate. Yeah, percentage. Well, what I'm asking. Yeah, so last year we estimated that it was going to be. We said it's going to be a three point one per three point five percent increase. And it was a decrease. Because the grand list was higher. Because the grand, grand list, list went up. Went so yeah, we like were off much closer 4 estimate than yeah, these numbers probably look a lot better. In a good way. So some years you actually must be in a bad way. No, because we never No, because the grand list doesn't, doesn't tend to go, down, go down, down, usually, unless like a lot of things burned or something. Well, we're not in bad shape, given that the cost of living is 8%. And our budget projection is to go up about four and a half. So we're sitting in a pretty good spot. We took, um, we lowered the average cost of fuel. Yes, because right. as you based on that, your... Um, and then when I said 607 last time, that, I, that was diesel. It was diesel that was 607. So I don't think we're going to see a lot of savings in the diesel department. Right. But fuel oil, we had a recent delivery at 333. So it right. really... And the big thing is stability there. Yeah. Because if it's stable enough, they'll mm -hmm. give you a guaranteed price for the year. Right. Which so I took to a two-year average, so. two average of the gallons, and I did 450 a gallon. And that's so it would be, I would be able to lower everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. So things are looking good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. but we're going to, so I'm sorry, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure this was in the calendar was in our packet, but um, the timeline nice. we're looking at doing, when are we signing the warning? For the, Let me go to the timeline here. Uh, just to, sorry. Let me jump in with the history minute here. All right. In 1864, Hardwick was paying bounties for men to go fight in the Civil War of $300 ahead. Paying bounties? We're paying bounties. What does that mean? It means that it was a bonus. They were bribing them. 
Oh, you get paid if you, you sign up paid. to go. Right. You, there, you know what the grand talks. list was that year? You know what the grand list was that year? We're paying these guys three hundred dollars. Yes. Grand list was about seventy. But was about forty seven hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars, big money. Wow. But. But what is it compared to our brand list? $193 million, 300 of 4,700 is, I don't know, that is a hogging big amount of money compared to the brand list of the town. Right. Well, it's because we did spend it like water. <laughs> $22,000. Last $22, day, uh, last day to warn is, is February 5th is the last day to warn. Which we don't have. That would be a. Uh, looks like it's going to fall on a. On so days. and then so one twenty six is the first day to warn. So if we approve at the fifteenth meeting, is it the nineteenth? You might have to do a special meeting to approve the warning. Fifteenth, nineteenth. Our January meeting. Yeah. Oh yes, nineteenth. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, actually, we're going to have a meeting on the second of February. Yeah. Right. February second and ninth. And right. 16th. But we have to post the warning. I won't be the, at the first day minute. to warn it is one twenty six. Yeah, but the last day is February fifth. Right. Major. So does that mean the last yeah. possible day? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the nineteenth. Mm -hmm. So they're going to take, they're gonna take half of that. All right. So in any case, we have two more meetings. Yes, we're not going to approve. Be gone. Look at approving this, and, and we're going to talk about dedication and cover next time. Yeah. Are we going to do the in the executive session or do we do it in? We usually we do it. We usually do it. it. Oh, yeah. Just make it a surprise. Yeah. So we usually do it as an executive session, but it's not really a not proper use of executive session, but we just like it's just gives a little surprise. Like it's a little reveal. A little reveal. Uh -huh. But we'll do that next time. Okay. Yeah. And uh, all right. So then. Knowing that, select board reports, new business, old business. I got a bunch. Just kidding. <laughs> well, I'll buy it. I can't think of anything. We're, we're going to, I'll just report things are looking positive on the yellow barn front, and um, we are, we've extended our bid deadline to. January 19th in order to bring in two new bidders into the process. And both of them are very engaged. And uh, so we're very optimistic on that front. Right. Merry um, Christmas. What, yeah, we, we won't see. Oh, we got two weeks off, folks. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, and we get some all the other holidays. Some on the, Should we get something? Uh, I think you're supposed to give something. Yeah. Remember, you don't think when, we remember when Bar <laughs> Hill came in with a box of goodies for all of us? Do you remember when we had a party at the Yes. <laughs> that only happened once. All right. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. I'm going to adjourn. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.